Well, welcome and good morning to everyone. Uh, what a uh, fast week it has been. Uh, we arrived on Monday and it's hard to believe it's Friday uh, already, but uh, uh, I want to thank the uh, All-State Sugar Bowl and the committee members, our, our players, our coaches, our support staff have just had a fabulous time and the hospitality has been uh, second to none and, and we can't thank you guys enough for um, all you've done for K-State and I'd like to thank the City of New Orleans um, for everything. Uh, it's been a great, great time here. Uh, been able to see the city a little bit. I know our guys have and have had a great time with the different activities uh, that you put together. And, uh, and then I want to thank uh, the Kansas State fan base. Uh, boy, uh, I see purple everywhere I go. And uh, went a little bit away from uh, the hotel last night with a bunch of family members uh, to a dinner and uh, was decked in purple. So it was uh, a lot of fun to see. Uh, with regard to our football team, uh, it's pretty simple for us. It's discipline, commitment, toughness, and to be selfless. Our four core values are why we're here, and that's that's pretty much how I can state it. Uh, uh, we've got a great group of seniors, a great group of leaders um, that uh, believe in the power uh, of ownership, of player ownership, and the power of belief. And uh, uh, not many people expected uh, Kansas State to be in this position uh, this year. And... Um, uh, I knew we were on the right trajectory as a football program, uh, but uh, uh, th to make the leap that we've made this year, uh, it's a credit to those kids, and it's a credit to uh, their belief in one another, their belief in us as coaches, uh, and them taking ownership in the program. And uh, uh, we had uh, a really good season that was capped off with a phenomenal win uh, over a college football playoff team in TCU. I think we're the only ones to beat a, a CFP team that's in the Final Four is Kansas State. And uh, uh, that's a credit to those players. And they have great resolve. They've got great toughness. Uh, and uh, excited for them to have this opportunity. And I keep telling the guys, uh, and they truly believe it, we didn't just fall into this. We've earned the right. We've earned the right as Big 12 champions. We've earned the right to, to represent Kansas State and represent our conference in the Sugar Bowl. And uh, excited. We know the challenge at hand. We know we're going to play a uh, terrific Alabama football team that uh, doesn't really have any weaknesses. Uh, so we've got to play our best football. And I'm looking forward to our guys uh, playing their best football uh, come Saturday morning. Once again, before you ask your question, please wait for the microphone. Identi identify yourself and your media outlet. Questions? Right here on the left side. Hey, Coach Kleiman, uh, Jamal Kennedy, WSFA 12 Sports in Montgomery. Uh, before this, I was in Fargo, North Dakota, and I covered NDSU, and, and I know that you were there from 14 to 18. So um, how do you think that that transition, uh, being there at NDSU, prepared you for a position like Kansas State and, and the success that you endured there? Well, you play football in January. You don't have a job there, uh, for starters. Uh, it's about the culture of championships. It was there before I arrived there, um, and it has continued since I left. Uh, and so it's, it's about uh, playing football and your best football in December and getting an opportunity to play in January. Um, and so that obviously prepared uh, a number of us staff members to come down here and uh, um, come to Kansas State. And, um, you know, f I'm a big believer in football is football and, and uh, winning cultures are winning cultures and they take time to, to formulate and develop. But uh, uh, you got to have patience, you got to have great resolve and you got to have the right kind of guys in your locker room. And uh, uh, obviously we had that up north and uh, uh, we've started that down south. It's always been a good culture here, don't get me wrong. Coach Snyder's had the greatest turnaround in college football history. We just did it a little bit different way. but as we continued to, to build on his legacy in what we did here. So I, I'm excited about uh, where we're at and where we're at on their trajectory. Right here in the front row. Good morning, Coach. Harry Yosef out of uh, Birmingham, NBC 13. Same kind of question I want to ask you just about the, the shift in college football that we're seeing with a lot of guys you know, leaving programs and not as much commitment and loyalty. What does it say that both of these teams in this bowl game, even though outside of the college football playoff, have no opt-outs? And how important is that to you? Yeah, I, I look at Kansas State. Uh, I don't know what other programs um, are doing. I, I know that's out there. But um, you, know, you try to take care of your house, uh, and you do that with honesty. You do that with trust. You do that with belief in them. And you do that with surrounding them uh, with each other and not wanting to let each other down. I'm a big believer in playing for the guy next to you. And uh, we have a number of kids that uh, are going to have opportunities to play at the next level. Um, but 
we haven't had a kid on our football team that's had an opportunity to play in the Sugar Bowl and to play in a New Year's Six game. And um, that's really special. And the kids that you all know, that I all know, are those difference maker guys for us. I've never seen those kids more excited about playing a football game. And uh, um, they weren't going to let their teammates down. And it was never even a conversation that we even had to have. I never asked anybody, are you going to play in this game? You're at Kansas State playing for your brother, and you're going to play, and they know that. We have two questions here in the middle row. We'll start on the with Ed Daniels. Ed Daniels, WGNO, New Orleans. Coach, if you if there were a 12 team playoff, you'd be in it. Um, are you a fan of the playoff? What do you think it'll do for college football? Your thoughts on that, please. Yeah, well, I came from the playoff system, you know, uh, and at North Dakota State, we played 15, 16 games every year and never had a break. I mean, you you were round to round to round, and then you finally got a couple of weeks before you played the national championship. So um, I think it will create unbelievable excitement for college football. Uh, I, I know uh, from the revenue stream, that's going to help out as well uh, a, a lot of schools. Uh, but, um, you know, I think 12 is a good number to start with. I, I'm Bet it goes to 16. I don't know if it'll go in my lifetime, but it will probably continue just because of the excitement that it's going to bring. Uh, and uh, I think it's great for college football. We'll stay here in the middle on the right side. Hey, Coach, TJ Cleveland, KWCH in Wichita. Uh, you know, it's been almost a month since you guys, you know, played in that Big 12 championship. How are you guys kind of managing, staying focused with all the excitement around this game? And second of all, are, are you ready to stop talking about it and go play the game? <laughs> Yeah, uh, without a doubt, we wanted our kids to be where their feet are uh, and enjoy this. I mean, when we came down here on Monday, uh, there's a lot of activities, and, and those kids deserve this to enjoy it and, and go to some great, great restaurants and eat phenomenal food and, and get around the city and be in the, the Caesar Superdome. I mean, all neat things, and we talked all the time. Be where your feet are and enjoy this. Uh, once we got to practice yesterday, I think the kids could sense that we're about 48 hours away. And uh, today's a really good day for us because we get a chance to just lock our own guys in. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, absolutely. We're ready to get this thing started. Are right, in the back here on the right side? Tim Everson, Manhattan Mercury. Uh, since the two years that, that he got here, both both on and off the field, how impactful has, has Cade Warner been for this program? Um, Cade's as good a leader as I've been around uh, in this game for uh, a long, long time. And uh, Cade makes everybody around him better. And that's the thing that, that uh, I'm most excited about when uh, I think of Cade Warner. He's a terrific football player. But um, he holds people accountable to the standard that we all expect. And... He holds himself accountable to the st that standard, and he's a guy that's going to do it and show everybody uh, and then uh, bring them along. And that's the sign of a, what we call a servant leader is you make everybody around you better, and we're a better football team. We're a better football program um, in the last couple of years because of Cade Warner. Front row, left side. So, Tony Reese, WCDM out of Columbus, Georgia. Coach, talk about the preparation this week of how you actually been preparing your team going forward this Big matchup on Saturday. Yeah, well, we gave our guys uh, uh, Christmas off. Uh, our last practice was Wednesday and then gave them four days off to get around, be home with family, and then uh, we reconvened on Monday. It was good. It was a normal week with the game on Saturday. So for us, it's been our normal preparation as far as what we would do on Monday uh, to our padded days on Tuesday and Wednesday, uh, back to more of a scripting day on Thursday. So, um, you know, routine's really big for for college football kids, and uh, I think our guys appreciated the fact that we had a normal routine this week. Right here in the front row. Hey, Coach. Taylor Kaufman, CBS 42 in Birmingham. K-State's never played Alabama in football. How excited is your team to play the Crimson Tide and possibly beat one of the best teams in college football in the last decade? Yeah, uh, our, our guys know all about the, uh, the tradition uh, of excellence that Alabama football is, and um, uh, they know the task at hand. Uh, they're excited that uh, we get to play one of the best programs in the history of the game. And over the last few decades that Coach Saban has been there, they've been the gold standard for college football. Um, and uh, so our guys, I, I know, know that. I mean, there's a lot of things that you don't need to talk about, um, whether it was uh, who we play in our conference on a week-to-week basis and, and the rivalries we have there to what we're going to face here in the Sugar Bowl. And uh, uh, I, I know our kids are, are really excited about that. And, and we've got to take care of, of K-State. I mean, I, I know that Alabama is going to be ready to play and have a good football team, good players. 
but it's more about us and making sure that we don't have silly airs and, and play a clean game. Yeah, we're going to go to the middle of the left side. Hello, Coach. Luke Lazarczyk, K-State Collegian. With this being some veteran players' last game, how does it feel that they've been able to now reach the point to where they're finishing their college career playing in a Sugar Bowl? Yeah, uh, I, I think it's the, the pinnacle for most of our players that are, that are leaving. Uh, you know, Whether or not they're going to go on and play at the next level, we have a lot of guys that are going to have that opportunity. Even some of the guys that I know are maybe um, going, continuing on with their master's degree, have a job, whatever it may be. Um, the journey that these kids have been on with us and our staff over the last four years, uh, this is pretty rewarding. And, uh, you know, we had a good season in 19, um, our first year here as we started to implement some things. And then we got ravaged like everybody else did in the COVID year. Um, and we had to re reset some things in January of 2021. And we had a phenomenal senior class in 2021 that we were able to kickstart this thing going in the right direction. Uh, and then it just kind of continued on. Once we won the bowl game last year, um, uh, the Texas Bowl in early January, uh, our guys have been working a whole year for this. And those, those guys that knew this was their last go around, um, I was so excited that they were able to, for starters, cap it off with the Big 12 championship. That's our, that's our ultimate goal every year is to win the Big 12 championship. And um, a lot of people doubted that those kids could do that, and they did that. So they uh, they're going to reap the rewards of, of playing in the All-State Sugar Bowl. We're going to the back of the right side. Hey, Coach. Cool Carmody, GoPowerCat.com. Uh, we had a chance to talk to Josh Hayes a little bit earlier this week, and he obviously has played in a national championship. You have coached in national championships, and he said that the preparation for this week almost feels a little bit bigger than that. Um, does it feel that big to you, and what has that been like throughout the locker room? Well, um, it's great to have guys like Josh that have championship pedigree. And, um, you know, it, it's come full circle for me with Josh in the fact that I sat in his home in Lake Gibson, Florida, and recruited that kid to go to North Dakota State. Uh, and the kid started as a true freshman in a national championship game uh, and played really well. And then five years later, I'm sitting in his home last January visiting with the same kid, same parents, about coming to Kansas State and how he could be have an impact here. And so there's a guy that really appreciates being where your feet are, uh, getting an opportunity to play in a game like this. And uh, uh, I, I'm excited for, for Josh as well as everybody else to have that great opportunity on Saturday. OK, third row left side. Coach, in your opening statement, you talked about how Alabama has no glaring weaknesses. One of their biggest strengths is obviously Bryce Young. When you watch him on film, what areas of his game are the most impressive to you? Uh, their front seven on defense and their offensive line on offense. I mean, that's um, you know that's where the game is won. Everybody's got skill kids. We've got good skill kids. They've got good skill kids. Uh, schematics and stuff are good. Uh, but the game's won in the trenches. The game's won up front on both sides of the line of scrimmage. And uh, their front seven is uh, really, really talented. Uh, and, and their offensive line comes off the football, is physical. And, you know, I, I hope that's a strength for us as well. We believe it is. It's, you know, you win the Big 12, you better be good up front. And on both sides of the line of scrimmage, um, we've been exceptional up front. So it'll be a big challenge for our guys uh, on the offense and defensive lines. We have time for two more questions. We'll start right here in the front row on the left side. Hey, Chris. Kellis Rob, not here from the Wichita Eagle and Kansas City Star. Uh, Will Howard strikes me as a guy who's uh, maybe gone through more extreme lows and highs than m most Kansas State players have during their careers. How mentally do you think, uh, now that you look back on his arc, how, how mentally do you think he you know, handled, handled his journey? F phenomenal. And Will Howard's ready for this stage. And I can't wait to watch him cut it loose uh, tomorrow. And one of the best things that happened to Will, Will Howard was Adrian Martinez. Uh, Adrian's uh, journey uh, was difficult as well. And he ended up coming to K-State. And both those two quarterbacks have helped us win the Big 12 championship. And they've leaned on each other quite a bit. They've come become really, really good friends. And uh, um, excited to see both those guys on this big stage.